In an old Japanese village deep in the mountains where the cries of the cicada seemingly never cease and the pavement on the road ran out many miles back. Whispers tell of an anime so atrocious that all who lay eyes on it are doomed to die. An outlandish tale, nothing but rumor, of course. Isn't that a comforting thought? I have seen that anime. I've seen so many things. I don't have much time left. I need to tell someone. I need to warn you so you don't make the same mistake I did. King's Game the Animation might seem like just another ill-conceived high-concept J-horror pastiche with so bad it's good animation and voice acting. Listen, nerd! If you screw my girlfriend, I will kick your ass, you understand that? You might even look at that and think, wow, this could be a real good time with the buds and some beers, particularly at a rowdy anime-themed Halloween party. But don't be fooled. This show might seem funny. <laughs> I could not deal with this chick! We're going. Hilarious, even. That was a close one, but it looks like your bazongas are safe for now. The title and or thumbnail of this video might even be telling you that it is, depending on how many times I've changed them by now. But unless you think it would also be a good time to watch all those buds get the ring grudged by evil ghosts or a curse or whatever, you best heed my warning. Well, okay, maybe it's a little hilarious. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen a cartoon be funnier on purpose than King's Game is by accident sometimes. It's honestly uncanny how often King's Game manages to f*** its way up into doing the funniest thing possible. Just listen to the OP. <laughs> There is simply no funnier sound to pair with visuals this deviant art than full-on screamo. Except maybe dad rock. And on that note, today's video is sponsored by Dungeon Hunter 6 featuring Nickelback. No. Seriously. Dungeon Hunter 6 is the latest entry in the classically styled hero collecting hack and slash franchise of the same name. M minus the number part obviously. In this free-to-play mobile ARPG, you'll play freely as a bounty hunter of multiple classes, including Boon Sisters. I picked that one because I like high dexterity builds. Definitely not for the sexy nun model. I wasn't even thinking about sexy nuns. It didn't even occur to me how sexy she is. What's a nun? In Dungeon Hunter 6, not only do you get to loot each boss you've bested in battle, you can recruit and summon up to three of them at a time to aid you in future fights, combining their unique skills as you see fit and eventually even shape-shifting into them to take their mighty powers as your own. With over a hundred unique bosses to conquer and collect and monthly updates constantly expanding that roster, the creative opportunities to define your own build and playstyle here are endless. Although. If endless possibilities intimidate you, you could always play to the meta and bring your squad into PvP. Go it alone or join up with a guild for some steamy guild-on-guild -guild action. Not to mention guild-on-raid dungeon action if you're into that. It's a big game. There's lots of stuff to do. The devs even put in a cool little stealth section where you turn into a cat inspired by a cat at their office. And you know how we feel about cats in this basement. They're all right. To try the game for yourself and see all it has to offer, just click the link in the doobly-doo or scan this here square doodad with your scanny thingy, and you'll get a special starter pack of 10 summoning scrolls, one demonic wolf SSR lieutenant, and one accessory pack totally free. That's a special offer just for Mother's Basement fans worth a whopping $50. So don't delay. Click that link below to play today. King's Game the Animation isn't just a bad anime. It's the worst anime ever directed by Tokihiro Sasaki, a man responsible for not one, but two of my top five worst anime of the year. 2021's Battle Athletes Victory Restart. <coughs> And 2019's Nobunaga Sensei's Young Bride, the story of a high school teacher whose 14-year-old great-great-great-great-granny time travels to the future to marry him, prompting much jealousy in several of his also 14 female students. No, hold up a sec. That was a short anime. I didn't 
put short anime on those lists back in 2019. So what show am I forget? Oh yeah, Try Nights. So much for that therapy. I guess I should add some kind of trigger warning for those uh, things here, because they are something of an aesthetic feature of Sasaki's house style, where the faces are optional and anatomy's a matter of opinion. Also, while we're at it, more serious trigger warnings for every kind of sexual trauma you can imagine. Because this anime really, really wants you to know that it's not afraid to be all edgy and dark and junk. Its dad even let it see Hellraiser. On that note, as a final sorta of warning, the show also contains various forms of body horror and other animated violence that might conceivably be triggering for some extremely squeamish people, maybe? I understand that many out there appreciate warnings about shows where animals get hurt, for instance, and that does happen in this, and I'm about to show the clip, so if you know for sure that you absolutely cannot handle that under any circumstances, no matter how hilarious, then by all means, skip to this timestamp. But like... Yeah, it all basically looks like that. So, like, be wary if you have recurring nightmares about CDI Zelda cutscenes, I guess. Also, I mostly skim over it in this video, because, you know, YouTube, but the anime also thinks self-harm is just the edgiest thing if you plan to watch it. Okay, I think that about covers everything. So, you might be wondering, what is a King's Game exactly? Pro Tag Kun gets a text conveniently explaining exactly that, not 30 seconds into episode one. Orders come in, via SMS, those orders are absolute, and you have 24 hours to carry them out. Everyone in class has to play, and no one's allowed to quit part way. Break the rules, and you get punished. Punished how? You know, mostly that sort of thing. But the punishment doesn't necessarily need to be something as deadly as drowning. Usually it's a lot deadlier. Like when Nobuaki's ex-girlfriend gets spontaneously dislimbed. Nobuaki. I want to live with you. Chibi! As you might have guessed, that was all a dream, not a real thing that happened. But of course, that still prompts a lot of questions, such as why was Nobuaki dreaming about a mountain of skulls next to the Leaning Tower of Pizza? No idea. It never comes up again. Honestly, I forgot this whole scene even happened until I went back to look for clips. I thought the episode just started with the sports festival, which does come up again, like, all the time, even though literally the only thing it does for the plot is establish who can run fast. But you see, it's pretty much the only scene in the entire show of the kids, you know, hanging out together and having fun before everyone starts getting death noted, so pretty much by default, it's the load-bearing flashback in every character's tragic dying young montage. Which, as you might assume, this anime needs a lot of, since obviously there's no way a 12-episode series about a death game with over 30 participants could ever have even remotely enough time to organically flesh out all those characters and their relationships before they gotta die. But actually, you'd be wrong with that assumption. This is a 12-episode anime about two death games with over 30 participants. Each! For some unfathomable reason, series writer Kenji Kunuda thought it was a great idea to cram the entire plot of the novel's first volume into the first half of volume two as a series of episode-length flashbacks, which, as you might imagine, does absolute wonders for the tension and pacing of both stories by constantly interrupting everything in the present to focus on a bunch of characters who we already know are all gonna die because that's literally the first thing we're ever told about any of them. Nobuaki was the lone survivor of that volume one death game, you see, meaning he watched all of his old classmates die horribly, which, you know, tends to f a guy up a bit. So now that it's his first day of, uh, 2010 Best Picture winner The King's Speech class, I guess, at his new school, when his new classmates are all... Were there any hot girls at your school? Hey, please tell me you like soccer. Hey, come on, man. Let's all be friends. He's all... No! Uh, uh... I told you all to leave me alone! Hang on! However, his kindly... No saintly desk neighbor Natsuko sees how he's hurting deep down, and she's not just gonna let him stay in his shell moping. 
Nobu, we're all hoping that you'll get more comfortable with our class. At first, he scoffs at her friendly offer to run Relay together at the sports festival. I mean, how could someone that cheerful possibly understand all his angst? But he's set straight after overhearing some extremely organic exposition. You know what I like about Natsuko? She's always so happy. Sure, but do you think that's real? She might be covering up the fact that her parents were killed. Inspired by the thought that if she can, he can, he finally finds the courage to open up and make friends again at the sports fest. And if you remember what I said about how this show constantly does the funniest thing possible, you can guess how that goes. It's been a long time, but I'm actually having fun again. Things feel like they used to. I'm starting to feel at home. Lucky for Nobuaki, his first order is simply to kiss his obvious love interest, who's obviously down for that. Well, I wouldn't mind. Just once. But this anime is based on an early cell phone novel, a turn-of-the-century mode of sub-pulp serialized storytelling that rose to prominence by letting bored young Japanese women get their Fifty Shades of Grey fix via text or email subscription, so... Uh, don't expect that to set any kind of consensual precedent. Probably a good time to restate that trigger warning here. Also a good time to pick up the pace, since we got a lot of shitty death game to get through. Everyone in class assumes the text is just Nobuaki's way of making a move on Natsuko, understandably, and also understandably, none of them believe him when he says, The King's game is very, very real. All they do is laugh, and then get really creeped out and angry when he keeps pushing it, which in turn makes him so depressed that when Natsuko Natsuko herself asks him to smooch and points out that he said they'd, you know, die if they don't. What about the king's orders? You said it was real, so shouldn't we think about what- I can't kiss you! Specifically, he can't kiss her because he already went all the way with a different girl who died in the last King's game and is still in love with her. Which kind of undermines the whole relatable to your target audience thing that anime are typically going for when they make their pro tags this insufferably whiny. But either way, she doesn't let that stop her from hopping the baseball fence and planting the peck on his unpuckered lips right before midnight. Which, you might be concerned, violates his consent, but don't you worry, he doesn't think she's done anything wrong. She's so happy and kind. The whole class loves her. She hasn't done a single thing wrong. See? Shortly thereafter, midnight rolls around, bringing with it a new set of orders. And this time, in addition to all the trashy sex stuff, one of them is to not sleep at all today, which is, you know, kind of an asshole rule to instate at midnight specifically, and as you might expect, several students are immediately punished for it by turning into Logan Paul content, which obviously YouTube isn't gonna let me show you no matter how poorly it's drawn, very for the record. So if you're not watching the uncensored Patreon cut of this roast, just imagine all this happy stock footage behind me is terrible MS Paint fan art of Doki Doki Literature Club, and you'll have a pretty good idea what you're missing. With classmates dropping left and right, everyone's finally ready to hear Nobuaki out about what happened to him and what's gonna happen to them. And all things considered, they take the news pretty well. You mean he's shut your mouth! Screw this king's game! In an unlucky break for that guy, though, lynching your classmates apparently counts as an unnecessary action, which the king forbade, so he gets punished next with, uh... What the hell? <laughs> what you do to me? Nothing! It wasn't me! Help me. Honestly, I'm not sure what that was, but the king described it as bleeding to death, so let's go with that. And with that, we are finally through the setup. Episode 2 picks up right where we left off, with Natsuko grappling with the horrifying implications of everything they've just been told. Do you really mean that I'm going to die unless Teruaki and I have sex? Before it answers that question, the show gives us our first look at its opening credits. And there's one scene in particular here that I think first-time viewers will find very interesting. No, not the bit where the stuffed rabbit gets soaked in c Although yes, that is the only conceivable way to interpret this sequence of shots. No, I'm talking about this bit where we see Nobuaki and some girl who's had exactly one spoken line so far. Just let him go. 
You guys really can't take a hint. Standing in this maelstrom of darkness opposite Natsuko, who then turns dramatically to flash us a yandere grin so fiendish that you know Gasai herself would call it a bit much. Hmm, I wonder what all that could be implying. Golly, it's such a mystery, but that's what I love about this genre. It's so unpredictable. Anyway, seeing that his best and most trustworthy friend and ally Natsuko still needs convincing of the severity of their situation, Nobuaki launches into the first of many flashbacks. His last game started much the same as this one, with the king ordering a male and female classmate to get a little fresh with each other. Though in this case, they don't actually go through with it, and thus, while it looks like your bazongas are safe for now, they're now Necks are not, and so their teacher has the sad task of announcing the next morning that they were both found cosplaying Sayori. But there is still a little bit of doubt as to whether it's really real, particularly among those affected by the next orders. Which, again, are just as horny as the ones in the present. Listen, nerd! If you screw my girlfriend, I will kick your ass, you understand that? You know they would never do anything like that. Shut your mouth! What would you do if you were in my shoes, huh? Don't think for a second you'd act differently. If you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. Unfortunately for Shota, his girlfriend and the nerd both think it over and realize realize that neither a dumping nor an ass kicking are scarier than, you know, f***ing dying, so they, you know, but even more unfortunately for the nerd, the next day's orders give Shota the power to give one order of his own. Tazaki Daisuke! I order you to- Luigi's Mansion. Yourself and- Go to a nice farm upstate. <laughs> Which Daisuke understandably doesn't take too well at first, even though... I know logically speaking there's no possible way this game is real. Of course you don't, you f***ing horn dog. But Nobuaki knows just how to take his mind off things and get him in the right headspace to survive this cliché horror movie scenario. By talking at length about their hopes and or dreams for the future. One day, I'm gonna play the Budokan. That's been my big dream. Mine too. I wanna be a musician. One day, if... If I live? Dude, Daisuke, this is totally amazing! Yeah, I know! I can't believe I found someone with the same dream as me! Hey, I have an idea! Let's hang out and have a band practice tonight! Try to Luigi! Yourself and I'll stop you! Just look at these! I'm super jealous! Man, I wanna be rich! Well, pick one up and jam! It felt like we could do anything! Like we were unstoppable! I don't wanna die! I wanna live! We like being alive! We like being alive. We like being a we like being a we like being alive. I'm not gonna die! I'm alive. I survived the night. Hell oh, yeah, yeah, you, you did. did! Let me go get us something to drink. Oh. <sighs> it's just now almost midnight! Huh? Oh. Nice game! Where are you? <sighs> what did you do? Meanwhile, back in the present, Nobuaki's story has convinced Natsuko that she needs to do what the sex text says. However, she just doesn't want her first time to be with some rando from her class, so she asks Nobuaki, Sleep with me before he does? That's not gonna help you at all. Weak, dude. Though not nearly as weak as when he and his whole class just, like, stand there watching one second later when Teruaki forces himself on her. Especially since, unlike us, none of them have seen the opening, and thus they do not realize that actually it is he who is pinned on the ground with her. <laughs> <laughs> and here I was, hoping you'd have some sort of good advice, since you played it before and survived. Hold on! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're gonna do it here? I swear that I'll survive, and I'll stop at nothing to do so. Hurry and strip, Teruaki! You can't just do it in the open! <laughs> Why don't you shut up and die already, hypocrite?! She then drags Nobuaki off to give him some more, honestly, quite valid advice. You still want to protect them, despite the fact that they beat the crap out of you. Grow a pair. And tell him how she really feels. Why are you... If you don't get out of my sight, 
I'll murder you myself. I hate you. Then she goes full princess shouting out to all their classmates that he's attacking her, which is obviously not the kind of thing that they just stand back and let happen to Natsuko specifically less than two minutes ago. So naturally, it's lynching time again, which for some reason these guys don't get punished for, even though Freckles McBaseball Cap over here literally died five minutes ago for doing the same thing. Not content to merely give him the old Gene Simmons and enjoy the show, though, Natsuko then tries to convince this Twin Tails over here that Nobuaki deserves one of the death texts that the king has ordered her to send today. Come on, just try it out. I bet it'll feel really good. He'll be getting what's coming to him. Is she acting weird, or is it just me? But right when all hope seems lost for our hero, their classmate Kenta shows up looking for him. And he ain't happy about any of the crimes that are clearly going down in this park tonight. Uh, what are you doing? Come on, put on some clothes. Oh, shut up. In response, Natsuko tries to make Mizuki CC Kenta to death as well, while Nobuaki argues that she should just kill him and Natsuko instead. But then the sudden escalation from single to double dog homicide just ends up spooking her. So no head? You dumb cow. But wait! I can just buy a new phone, can I? It'll be okay, right? It's too late. Kenta then decides to take Nobuaki to the hospital with Mizuki in tow. Natsuko wants to come too, but... I cannot deal with this chick! We're going. Which actually turns out to be a huge mistake, since leaving the villainess behind allows her to both get her hands on Nobu's phone at the end of the episode, and also sort of take charge of the other students, but now I'm getting way ahead of myself. First, Kenta's gotta use the free order the king gave him to plant a flag. I'll send it to myself saying protect Yukimura Mizuki, save her, make sure that she survives this. If I don't follow the order, I'll die too. So you know I'll do everything to protect you. And Nobu's gotta set up another 15 minute flashback. I did things I can't take back in the last game too. Long story short, the horrible thing in question is lying to a bunch of his old classmates about knowing a way out of the King's game so they'd all vote for his buddy Naoya in a literal popularity contest against this popular bitch Kana, who's understandably a bit miffed to see it come down to a tiebreaker after she traded sexual favors to every guy in class for their votes. Then the show does the funniest thing possible twice. There's no way I'll lose. My name has to be written on the slip. My name. Not so fast. You didn't read all of it. Huh? This vote is for Naoya. No! I don't want to be punished and killed! But it's not over yet. Obviously, since the flashback hasn't ended yet. Many hours later, as the gang is hanging out, talking about how cute Nobuaki and Chiemi are together and how Naoya will, quote, get a girlfriend better than her in no time, Kana dies in her hospital room, meaning that her order gets passed on to Naoya and also changed to have sex with literally anyone, which wouldn't normally be too much of an issue, especially for a cutie like him, except that it's already 11.50, and who could he possibly find to f*** at this hour? What's that? Nobuaki? How progressive of you. Sadly, the king's both quite strict and quite vague with his rules, and 10 minutes just ain't enough refractory period to literally f around and find out if he goes by the Clinton definition. There's only one logical conclusion here, which our hero instantly reaches. Do you have a plan? Wait, Nobuaki? Where are you taking us? Ah! Uh -huh. Even in the face of imminent immolation, Naoya's way too much of a bro to do that deed. But of course, you don't just let a bro like that go without a fight. I'm begging you, damn it! Sleep with Chibi! I can't! There's no way! Ah! I won't! Will you just let me die with some honor? But why? Please hurry. Do it while he's unconscious.
Did Sneeko direct this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm the worst man alive. After that, the flashback immediately ends, as if to purposefully remind us that everything we just saw was completely meaningless because everyone involved is already dead. That said, when Kenta tells Nobu it's all the king's fault, not his, the way he says it is kinda reminiscent of Naya, so it's sorta like our hero has his best friend back now. And gosh, I sure wish I could be happy for him, but uh... If I don't follow the order, I'll die too. You know, may as well get attached to a pig in a slaughterhouse. Well, okay, technically the next three episodes are just oops all flashbacks as the kids ride a poorly animated train and later a poorly animated taxi out to this village in the mountains where the King's Game began. So in terms of raw runtime, Mizuki and Kenta do survive the longest out of any of the many new characters this anime suddenly introduces in the same arc they die in. But you know, only technically. Back in the flashback, we're suddenly introduced to this new girl named Nami, who has apparently always been Nobuaki's treasured childhood friend and close confidant. Even though they haven't spoken once until now, she's the only person besides Naoya and Chiami that he can trust with his theory that the king might be one of their classmates. And in turn, she trusts him enough to totally believe that and use her free order to order herself to touch the king. Thus, setting a clever trap to find their killer classmate. Even though Nobu told her multiple times that it's just a hunch and he has no idea who the killer is. Also, like that's not enough flags for a parade already, she's had a crush on him forever but never had the guts to say it. I'd say I don't have to tell you what happens to her, but actually in a twist, when her plan predictably fails, she's only punished with the loss of her eyes. In another tragicer twist though, Nobuaki's next order is to lose something precious to him, like more precious than his TV, iPod, guitar, or even the fugly silver bracelet he lifted off that dead rich kid. As precious as, say, a childhood friend who might have just conveniently decided she can't take it anymore after being blind for all of half a day. And so, despite his most galaxy-brained efforts to lose something else first... <laughs> there you are! Where have you been? Jimmy, I... I've been with Nami this entire time. We had sex. I love Nami now. You got that? Why would you say that? Aren't you listening? You and me are over. I'm bored. You're an idiot. I never want to see you again. He's forced to say goodbye to her in, say it with me now, the funniest way possible. Wait a sec, hold up. Is that live action water he's diving into? I'm having Kamikatsu Combine Harvester flashbacks. But then, what's the point of scrutinizing the VFX in a show with regular animation like this? For that matter, what's the point of scrutinizing the plot? You guys get how this goes by now. Each episode, some new increasingly unfair rule like you're not allowed to cry gets announced, then some new guy and or girl who may as well have been furniture in the last episode suddenly starts vomiting exposition about their backstory and motivations five to ten minutes before they die in some absolutely f***ing hilarious way. Like they're desperately trying to email their research on the OG Kings game, but then their clicking hand explodes! And because they gotta click with their other hand, they run out of time to also click their very last chance to tell their crush how they feel. And somewhere in there you'll find one, maybe two breadcrumbs pointing to the central mystery of what's really going on and who the king really is. Which, oh boy, all I want to talk about right now is how stupid that is, so let's just skip ahead. The flashback King's Game ends with one final contest at this electric dam slash public park, where one guy's gotta roll the die and call out the names of that many classmates, and then those classmates will all die, and so will he. And this bully guy who everyone in the class hates, apparently, now that he's not furniture, well, he's convinced that whoever rolls is gonna get him because of all the bad stuff that he's done off screen, I guess. So he holds Chiami at knife point to make Nalia roll the die and name classmates other than him, which of course puts a lot of pressure on the little guy that 
he don't deal with so good. Naoya, um, name Masami. She isn't here. People's lives are in my hands, Keita! <laughs> no. Me? You idiot! Uh My neck hurts! I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Hey, it's fixed, right? Oh no! And of course, Buddy rolled a six, so uh, yeah, that happens a lot more times until pretty much everyone besides the mains is gone, including that bully guy after he gets predictably bamboozled. Then it's Naoya's turn. You can't! No! No, Naoya! Talk to me! What do you think heaven's like? It must be an amazing place, yeah? Because... Everyone stays there. But there's no time to figure out what he meant by that, or grieve for that matter, because Rhea, this albino chick who can't seem to decide if she's the problem-solving Kyoko or the problem-causing Nagito of this dangan rompish scenario, is finally ready to stick some deus all up in this here machina. Stop it! What do you think you're doing? I thought that'd be obvious. I'm going to take down the king right now. Yes, Kyoko at home has figured out exactly who the king is. Or should I say, exactly what? 40 years ago, in the remote village of Yonagi, orders started going round in paper envelopes and people started dying. And scientists would later theorize that the cause of these mysterious events was a virus that hypnotizes you to death. You see, when the human body receives a powerful enough cue or suggestion, it can actually destroy its own cells. Which is obviously very silly, but also technically a JoJo reference, which is generally a ironclad defense for any anime bullshit you want to pull. But even accepting the whole hypnovirus thing at face value, you're probably asking yourself what the laptop's for. Also, where it came from. I can't answer that. I don't think anyone can. But I can tell you that Rhea's big plan is to hack the network, to exploit a bug in the kingdom, game and delete it forever. For you see, series author Nobuaki Kanazawa does not appear to know the difference between a regular virus, a computer virus, and Richard Dawkins' meme theory. According to at least one theory, the suggestions are like a type of infectious disease that can spread. Now, normally, I would assume that there's something more going on there than just the guy's that dumb, but I refuse to give any author who names his protagonist after himself the benefit of the doubt. I'm starting the program. Oh, this is not good. They're using our connection to the APHIS database. Is it really over? <laughs> so the bug itself was a trap set by the king. Now, they are right next to a dam, so she could always just jump in the water to save herself, but just in case that doesn't work and we need to know how tragic her death ended up being, she's gotta pause first to dump some backstory on us about the leet hacker dad who taught her how to program, but then also did a lot of very un-YouTube friendly stuff to her that I trigger warned you about at the start of this video. So let's just, whoa, man, hold it. Jeez, dude, we were like three frames from a yellow dollar sign there. What are the fidget spinners for? Back in the present, the kids finally arrive at Yonagi Village, more than one year after Nobuaki's friend sacrificed himself to tell him about it so he could go there and stop the King's Game. Anyway, they discover a shocking revelation there. This random dead villager guy left a note behind apologizing to his daughters, and one of those daughters looks very familiar. Is that Chimi? And her father? What in the hell is this place? Yup, 
Turns out that on top of being both kinds of virus and a meme, the King's Game also works like a genetic disorder. And Chiami is the one who unwittingly infected their class. And we ain't done with the shocking reveals just yet. Wait, daughters? Chibi had a sister? Natsuko? That's right. What killed Natsuko's family wasn't. A plane crash, right? Uh huh, but rumor is the whole thing was a murder suicide. <sighs> Either way, it's so sad. It was the King's Game all along. And it wasn't just Nobuaki's class that caught the disease. Natsuko survived her own game at her old school. That's what forged her into the villain we know today. While Nobuaki's busy picking up that exposition dump, a whole bunch more of their classmates fail their orders and drop dead off screen. And Mizuki wanders off in search of a signal to finally send those death texts. One to Natsuko, naturally, and one to herself. Because she's caught feelings for Kenta, see? Which she's convinced are unrequited even though he literally made a binding vow to die for her. So now she's gonna go die so that she doesn't have to be sad and single. Luckily, he catches her before she can do the deed. And when she's all like, so do you uh, like, like, like me? He's all like, I don't know. Do you like this smooch? Then she's all, Oh, this is so wonderful. Murder suicides are just the most romantic. So he's all, Well, baby, I... What? And she really does not take him not taking that well well. No. I love you. Goodbye! Wait, don't go! <clears throat> <clears throat> Unfortunately for the both of them, it turns out that texts sent from any phone other than the original one that she broke don't count. So they both get punished right after Nobuaki finally finds them, of course, in this hilariously melodramatic scene where they're both like crawling along the ground and trying to reach out with the last of their strength. But then just before they can hold hands, they die and it's so sad. Then Nobuaki gets a phone call from the funniest thing possible. Hi there, Nobu babe. What did you do? Tell me now. Basically, as soon as that text came in, I screwed Teruaki. That way, an obedience confirmed message got sent out to everyone. I figured Kenta would totally misunderstand and think it was from Mizuki. He died with his timid little girlfriend blushing at his side. Shut up! Ooh, are you sure that you want to talk to me like that? You do remember it's your phone I'm calling from, right? <sighs> Enjoy your night. See you soon, Nobu. She also takes Teru's phone after catching him plotting against her in the bathroom. My dear Teruaki. <laughs> You know you can't betray me. Okay, girl, dial it back a bit. Light Yagami is embarrassed for you right now. Once Nobuaki's back in town, she ambushes him in this random public park, though not before he's able to promote one final replacement sidekick out of the available furniture. This is Riona. You might remember her from the OP. And yes, that does mean this is finally almost over. Not because Natsuko turns over a new leaf at the revelation he f***ed her dead sister or something like that, though. She's still a stone-cold crazy bitch. You are such an unbelievably naive child. But that's what I dig about you, Nobu babe. <sighs> Love ya. Which the rest of the class is finally waking up to on account of her constantly acting like one in front of them, so we catch them hatching some sort of plot against her as she and the rest of the OP's final three arrive at the different park where they're all supposed to meet up to play a new game the king came up with. In it, everyone sits in a circle and takes turns breaking their own fingers on either their left or right hands to earn points that they can then use to either kill or save their classmates respectively, which seems Seems like a weirdly convoluted and overly specific rule set until we get to Teruaki, who pauses the game at his turn so he can cut Nobuaki's hair and declare that it's always been his lifelong dream since childhood to be a professional hairstylist. He just loves holding expensive shears so much with his fingers, you see. His highly precious and skilled fingers that he needs for his dream, the childhood one which he plans to grasp one day in those fingers when this is all finally over. Let's go! What are you gonna do now? 
<laughs> no! Yeah. Teru threatens to give all five death points to Natsuko if she doesn't give their phones back. Then, when she does, he gives her four, leaving the last one for her best friend Aimee, who planned this whole thing with him as a test of Natsuko's friendship and a way to teach her a lesson. All she had to do was break one finger on her own hand to save Aimee, and her friend would have sacrificed four for her, but she couldn't even do that. She can do this, though. <laughs> Aimee, run! <laughs> Tell me, Natsuko, are we friends? <laughs> Of course, that plan does have the slight flaw that nobody would willingly save the life of someone who literally just mashed their hand into a fine paste. But what Natsuko's enemies didn't count on is Aimee would, actually. Kinda just because... friendship? What? People do crazy shit when they're traumatized. It's not bad writing. You. To be fair to Aimee, when everyone meets up again after the obligatory post-game hospital trip, minus Teru's best bud Ryo, who went to get a Get Well gift for him, it does seem like her sacrifice has finally moved Natsuko, at least a little. She's still defending her actions and insisting that hope is both pointless and for suckers, but she at least opens up about some of the trauma from her last game and even seeks some sympathy from Nobu. But it was all just a ruse. She was just stalling until midnight, so no one would notice that she blocked the king on Teru's phone. The rules clearly say you can't leave the game partway through the fun. We all know what the goddamn rules are! There's one good thing. Ryo, at least he's not here to see me dying. One day, I'm gonna cut your hair again. <laughs> And right on time, here comes the funniest thing possible. Uh, Ryo! Why is Teru on the ground? Look, I bought you a hat! Come on, why aren't you smiling? Your best friend got you a great present! But these kids don't got time for emotional breakdowns right now. They gotta run, literally, to the peak of a mountain four islands down the highway by midnight. Also, they're not allowed to use any modes of transportation, and every eight hours, the kid in last place dies. As for first place, we already know from Sports Day that Natsuko and Nobu are the fastest in class, and Nobu does have that bad habit of not just letting his classmates die, so it's not hard to guess who's gonna take the lead, or indeed how almost the entire plot's gonna go from here on out. At least not if you've seen any other death game before. This is the bit where order starts to really break down, where dickheads start acting like dickheads for sheer dickheadery's sake. All the surviving non-dickheads have run out of shits to give about the slow and injured, and even our noble, self-sacrificing protag -kun can't tell what's right and wrong anymore. Is this right or wrong? I can't tell the difference anymore. See? But in spite of all that, this game is never gonna make him lose all his hope. Why don't you abandon them? Do it. Get their deaths out of the way quickly. Stop talking! You're never gonna make me lose all my hope! Oh yeah, I forgot. In addition to being both kinds of virus, a meme, and a genetic condition, the king is also a spooky ghost puppet sometimes. And sometimes that puppet is also Natsuko. But is the puppet actually like a supernatural entity of some kind? Or is it just a thing Nobuaki's hallucinating, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Who knows? It's never explained. The puppet does kind of have a point though. Despite his best efforts to save them, and by best efforts, I mean telling a guy who he just verbally acknowledged is running on pure adrenaline to take a little resty poo on the edge of a cliff, Nobu's classmates just keep dying on him. But even amid all that tragedy, he still finds something worth living for. As the show very subtly implies that his new sidekick might be filling the dead girlfriend-shaped hole in his heart. It's such a beautiful morning, isn't it? Is that you?
Are you trying to cop a feel at a time like this? But of course, all his protag nonsense has left them way at the back of the pack, where at least two contestants will be cold before midnight, remember? So when 8 a.m. rolls around, Nobuaki pulls a sneaky trick, or should I say, sneaker trick to make sure his new lady love is spared. You know, just in case Mr. Bandana Man's corpse doesn't count as being in last place. Luckily, he does, but now Riona's on to Nobu's tricks, and so when the next eight hour mark rolls around, they start hysterically arguing over who gets to die first, like some sort of inverse wabbit season bit. <coughs> <coughs> Why would you do that to me? Should've listened better, bud. She warned you like three minutes ago. Your job is to make it to the end of this with me. Got that? If you don't, I'll kick you in the balls. Lucky for them both, Aimee finally decided to stop letting other people run her life and hop on the old sewer slide over on the road on the other side of the mountain that nobody mentioned till just now. So after one last short flashback where we learned that Chiemi also took that slide after the king ordered them to kill each other in the last game, everyone arrives at the mountain with midnight fast approaching. And since Natsuko gets there first with plenty of time to start laying booby traps, we get to enjoy even more Looney Tunes bits, such as the classic flipped over road fork sign into pit trap combo. <laughs> wow, I honestly can't believe you fell for that. Uh, maybe pit trap's a strong word. It's more of a foot wide hole with some dirt and sticks in it that stares dickhead here trips over, then just sort of lies there in it for 10 solid seconds while she slowly walks around, raises her leg and curb stomps his shin. I mean, bro, I get it, you're probably very tired and maybe also twisted your ankles, so getting up off the table, that much I see, but like, you couldn't roll over a little or just raise your knee a bit there? Compared to him, the next girl's survival instincts are actually pretty decent. She at least knows not to trust Natsuko, but Natsuko knows she knows that and thus misleads her with reverse psychology. She does eventually start up the right path after her slightly smarter friend catches up with her, but then she immediately slips and falls off a cliff. And despite her prior pragmatism at the stairs, Black Ponytail does try to help the brown one back up here, but then she gives up like the second it's even slightly difficult. I am not going down with you, Yuna. Good luck climbing back up on your own. Proving once and for all that the line between dickhead and not a dickhead just looking out for number one is thinner than you think. Unfortunately for the newly converted dickhead, the temporary debuff from her sudden alignment shift means that her willpower is far too low to resist Natsuko's intimidation check. But only one person can survive this game. <laughs> and you're looking at her right now! <laughs> I don't wanna die! <laughs> On the other hand, when Natsuko tries to stop Nobuaki's group, his power of friendship buff lets him resist even the devastating psychic damage of her yandere laugh skill. <laughs> so everyone who's left makes it to the goal in time, though they do immediately start wishing they hadn't because the king's final order is to build a human doll out of their own severed body parts. Ryo, having finally lost it, conks Nobuaki out so he won't stop him from sacrificing himself for his friends, just like Teru did. Which Natsuko's all for, of course, and also, of course, she's already found a chainsaw for him. Here you go. Now, my advice would be to do it fast before the shock wears off. This is perfect. I'm going to become a real man! No matter what it takes! Yeah, that's the way, Ryo. Keep going! He does not do it fast though, and only gets through one leg before kicking the bucket. Then Glasses Girl wakes up and assumes Natsuko did it, and the whole thing devolves into a good old fashioned chainsaw fight. Which is pretty darn funny, almost the funniest thing possible. But you know what would be even funnier? 
if they suddenly interrupted that chainsaw fight, like right in the middle when half of them are already dead, to finally put together all the clues they've been collecting and solve this mystery. So anyway, everyone in the King's Game who dies gets one last text containing a single, seemingly meaningless letter. Riona's been collecting them in this game, Kyoko at home collected them in the first one for Nobu, and Natsuko collected them in her game. Alone, these strings of characters appear completely random. However, when you combine them... Look. Oh, crap. That has to be it. That means... So basically, none of us can keep on living if we really want to end the game. The King's Game virus lives in the bodies of everyone who's had to play before. If you survive, it could pass from you to others. And the game will continue until humanity is wiped out. You know, I gotta admit, I was not expecting the moral of this boilerplate death game story about finding hope and despair and overcoming survivor's guilt to be literally just give up though. Actually, asshole, you should have given up a year ago if you didn't want 30 more people to die. Great fucking job! And what's real crazy is Natsuko and Nobuaki both already knew that. And then one final message came in from the king. Yeah, so what did it say? Will it ever be over? So Natsuko was actually right on the money when she said, You're just a liar! You know only one person can survive the game. And even if you do survive, it keeps going. Nobuaki really is nothing more than a delusional, self-centered hypocrite, role-playing a hero to these kids and torturing them with false hope for his own satisfaction when he knows full well that he personally killed all of them. I'm sorry. I'm the worst man alive. Well, at least you're kind of self-aware. Holy shit, you guys. I think I might be unironically Team Natsuko now. Like, I'm not saying... She hasn't done a single thing wrong. They're both obviously objectively sociopathic monsters, but at least she's honest about it. Wait, did I just become a Republican? Is this right or wrong? Uh, I can't tell the difference uh, anymore. What's this what anime do? doing to me? Listen, nerd, no! if you screw my girlfriend, no! I'm begging you, damn it, oh! sleep with Chibi! <laughs> I cannot deal with this chick! Oh. There's no way! No oh way. no! Way. It's happening! The c curse! The King's Game is basically oh. a type of virus. Or meme, or virus, or whatever. At some point, <clears throat> we moved on to the internet. I have to end this. I'll kick you in the before balls. Before it's too late. In the face. Oh. It looks like your bazongas oh. are safe for now. In the face of such overwhelming despair, of course. The only thing they can possibly say is, so, chainsaw fight then? Yeah, chainsaw fight. And boy, do they ever chainsaw fight. <laughs> With the mean girl slasher at long last slain, our heroes finally turn their backs on her corpse, which is definitely dead now, and lean in very slowly for a well-earned smooch. I love you. I just wish I'd known sooner. Oh no! Anyway, that's how they all die. In her last moments, Natsuko gets all delirious and starts mistaking Nobuaki for the protag-kun she loved from her first King's Game, showing that there were at least some real feelings there, deep down under all that crazy. Then Riona drags him down to the beach for a romantic little lie down of her own with his lifeless corpse, before dragging them both beneath the waves to end the game for good. And then, finally, it's all over. Or is it? What the hell? A game? Yes, this anime is very cancelled, but that only means that Cliffhanger completely undoes everything they just accomplished and renders the story somehow even more pointless for no reason. Which is honestly pretty f***ing impressive when the premise of that story was already what if Final Destination's parents were cousins. So impressive and pointless, in fact, that it borders on unthinkable that someone could make an entire 12 episode anime without apparently having a single thing of value to say with it. And the more you try to think about that thought, the harder it 
unthinks your brain until you descend into madness and die. That's how this anime kills you. Maybe, I don't know, we'll nail the lore down in the sequel. Point is, watching this anime and realizing how pointless it is kills you somehow. But you can save yourself by showing someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was the evil guy, or maybe puppet ghost, all along. That's the big Halloween twist. This video was just a trick to pass the curse or whatever on to you, so I can live, unless I'm a ghost. And now you're gonna get the ring grudged in my stead, unless you send this video to five, no, ten of your closest anime watching friends and also subscribe and ring the bell and don't just click the like button smash that f***er on your way down to the comment section where you're gonna argue about whether gear 5 luffy can take ultra instinct goku that's right evil jeff engagement farms too and you can't stop me I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement. <laughs>